you know, just having the urgency to get the shooters, you know, understanding where those threats are at all times on the floor. Um, and some of it's game plan. You know, we're going to run certain guys off. Um, of it is also pick and roll coverage. Where if we're switching, we're down the floor, you don't get caught tagging quite as much. And anytime you put two on the ball, somebody's open. So and I think it's just a combination of all of that. Have teams gotten better at, you know, as the frequency of three pointers has risen? Have teams gotten better at defending? Uh, I, honestly, I don't know if there's if the numbers bear it out, but I think just the urgency and understanding that the, that value and and how much uh, you know value the teams put on that shot. I think it's there's just an awful heightened awareness to it. Um, and you know, if you give up a lot of threes, you're you're gonna have tough nights. Next, um, everyone, you to go to yes. Uh, yeah, that was just allowed. Um, uh, we talked to a lot about Denny. Uh, I think defensively, um, and as part of it, maybe he had it, and I just didn't know about it. But he uh, just uh, he stepped up to the challenge and been able to guard, you know, key matchups for us. His size and physicality, his ability to move his feet. Um, it's been it's good it's good to see because you know, I'm not just, I'm not going to say that I knew he could do it. Um, and I think the uh, the offense will click, uh, and he'll start making shots once he gets more comfortable. But he's really carved out his niche. Uh, early in this season uh, as a uh, as a defender for us. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like especially with young defenders, a lot of it's the one-on-one defense that's maybe easier to learn or comes more naturally than the, the team that helps it up. Yes. Where is he in that area? Is that kind of correct for him? No, that, that, that's correct. I think he's still kind of figuring out, you know, he gets caught a lot uh, over helping. Um, and I think that's where, you know, his heart's in the right place. He sees a, a missed assignment, he goes to help, but there's no purpose behind it. It's not his help, and it, it kind of puts us uh, in a tough spot. Um, I think it's, uh, you know, on the ball is easier because you know that matchup. I think you've studied your personnel. You're locked into that guy. Uh, just now when that play breaks down, do you have the discipline to help with, um, you know, with, the, with a little bit more discipline so he's not just running around? I think it gets caught in a lot of tough spots. Uh, last one, when he first got here, he had all the experience overseas and everything. That was kind of looking around when you it's good to be young <laughs> no i think it uh and i think it bodes to the environment that we've cultivated you know i think guys enjoy being around each other um you know obviously you got to pick your spots and know when we got to be focused and locked in, but also practice should be, you know, enjoyable. I mean, you want to come to work and have a good time. That's okay. As long as we understand when it's time to have fun and when it's time to, you know, uh, really concentrate on what we're trying to, trying to do. You know, when you see it in terms of defensive rebound opportunities that got away, I get it. Um, but it, are there specific, in terms of metrics, what do you look at to, yeah, for the most part, it's a percentage. Um, and I think it's just uh, a mentality where a lot of times we get caught into, you know, your matchup being, hey, this guy's got so many rebounds. And it's got to be a collective mindset where it's not just on one person. It's, it's all five on the floor have to be aware, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, just have that hit first mentality. On the topic of rebound attack, um, Kyle Kuzma, I think, is uh, almost having a double double this season. Did you expect him to be that much of a force on the board? No, I didn't, honestly. Um, I mean, it goes back to, you know, kind of learning this group as we've kind of grown together. Um, I think we're showing, you know, he's showing his ability to do quite a few things. Uh, and the rebounding has really been a plus for us. Uh, not, I, I wasn't aware of that being a strength of his, but uh, thus far it's been. Has been tangible. Is it you're very familiar with where he was before? Is this part of that that you want to see where there are other guys really gobbling up those boards? I'm sure to a, to a certain extent. I mean, you play with two marquee bigs and, you know, a player like LeBron, it's, uh, you know, those guys are going to command quite a bit. Um, so he maybe just doesn't have the opportunity to do so. And I think you know, on the flip side, his ability to play make. Um, you just don't get the opportunity in certain situations with certain certain groups. Has Cleveland done what it's done? 
the so-called experts in this space that we have? I, I give, uh, you know, JB a lot of credit. And those guys are uh, really bought in. They're playing hard. Um, it's, 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 it's crazy, even with you know them being shorthanded, how competitive they've been. Uh, they put a lot of pressure on the paint, you know, so that, that once again is going to be a challenge for us, uh, whether that's their smalls in, in living in the paint or Jared Allen on the glass or in the short roll. Um, their ability to change ends quickly. And then uh, defensively, they've been able to junk it up. Uh, so we, we just have to be prepared to see a little bit of everything. All right, coach. It's oh, he's talented. I mean, his length, athleticism, um, he can do a little bit of everything. Uh, I think it, it, it poses some problems for defenses because uh, he, he can play off the bounce, can, can shoot it, uh, but obviously get to the rim. He rebounds uh, relatively well. Um, and then defensively, though, you know, his length can be problematic. All right, Coach, we have time for just one question from Zoom. We'll take it from Karita. Sorry about that. Um, hey, Coach, just quick. You mentioned growing as a team together. Um, how are you approaching building chemistry with this team, especially being a new coach and also being new to the franchise? Well, I think it just boils down to the relationship uh, piece. You know, uh, we, we talked about that early on and how important that is. Um, you know, it's kind of as we get to know each other um, as people, um, that, that helps me be a better coach. I understand what, you know, drives certain guys, how to relate, uh, how to get the most out of them. Um, you know, that also opens those line of communications. If there's things that we like, don't like, uh, there's concerns, there's no hesitation. It can be voiced and uh, we can get past it. So I, th I think it's, you know, the, the relationship component has helped facilitate some of that. But, you know, now you start to see, you uh, the, the, the validation we've had, you know, some degree of success and, you know, that helps the buy-in of course. So guys are, are feeling good about the way we play. Out of Cleveland, I see a very big, big team. Um, you know, they play um, incredibly big, you know, if, if you put marketing at the three, you know, their front court is uh, all over seven foot, you know, probably all seven one. So, um, you know, we got a work cut out for us. It's, it's different. It's uh more of a taboo thing in the league. You know, the league kind of plays big. If you think about, you know, six nine threes, you know, six nine, six ten fours, but they're playing everyone at that seven foot mark. So it's uh, definitely different. And um, you know, we gotta be ready for it. So you're playing guys with lengthier than you kind of the entire roster. What's the most important part about establishing and is it physical presence? I mean, you just got to do your work early. Um, you know, it's cliche, but I mean, it's just what it kind of is, you know, uh, can't out jump those guys, you know, because they're, they're, they're taller. So uh, doing your work early, whether that's on the boards, make sure we crack back, box down, um, you know, getting to those guys' legs on, <clears throat> from a physical standpoint on, um, you know, rebounding offensively and defensively. And also just taking our time knowing that, you know, when, you, you get in the paint with uh, a guy like Jared down or, or Mobley, you know, they want to block shots uh, as much as they can, uh, which they are smart defenders and they do a great job of it. But playing paint to great basketball is going to be big for us. Um, we, we've been making strides in that department in the past two games. On Twitter, you referred to you, Harold, and KCP as the capital voice that they gave you up with. No, no, no. That's just like, you know, I say boys a lot. <laughs> you know, like whatever my life, you know, like I'm drinking wine with the homies. Like I'm just saying, yeah, wine boys. <laughs> so like, yeah, it's not just that, you know, but you know, we, we're in the capital, not us three, but you know, the team, the Washington Wizards are in the capital. So, so. That, that's not anything you want to say, right? Nah, 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 <laughs> nah. That's just like how I talk, you sure. know, in my real life, yeah. And then in that tweet, there was a bunch of statistics about the point the way you guys rank in the top 10 is, was there anything in that list that, that stood out to you? Um, I think we're just, I mean, one, we're like, uh, it was like top three, top 10, or we're top 10 in threes. And I felt like we've been shooting the ball pretty shitty all year. You know, everybody has really. And, um, you know, that was kind of surprising. Um, you know, I think we were doing a better job than I expected uh, on the defensive side of the ball. 
uh, at the beginning of the year, especially with preseason, I was like, yeah, I don't know how is this, this going to go, but uh, we've done a great job of defending at a high level, um, um, holding teams from the three-point line uh, exactly. So, you know, we've been pretty good stats. What do you uh, attribute to specifically that last one of uh, holding guys on the line or something like that? I mean, that's all about just effort. You know, I think we're doing a great job of, you know, when we're in our drop coverages of guards, rear view contesting, uh, making guys, forcing guys to play in, in the two-point range where most of the guys in the league aren't really comfortable. And then uh, the second part of that is just um, multiple effort plays, you know, being able to be in at the low man and then sprint out and run a guy off or have, a, you know, great uh, late contests. Uh, which is very important too uh, to that stat as well. Say that as soon as you a player so he or she coaches them, and I suppose the people are in the same place, I'm just curious, what are your thoughts about being a gaff? Gaff, um, I mean, this is my really first year, you know, really like, you know, being around him, you know, obviously, you know, he, uh, you know, still a young player, played with the Bulls, you know, seen him a little bit, kind of knew um, just from watching a couple of games, you know, earlier in his career in that sector that uh, he was a, a mobile, mobile style big, you know, big that uh, is not necessarily a unicorn in this league, but, um, you know, it's it's very rare to have someone that can be that much of a, a, a vertical rim threat in the, in the air, um, block shots, alter shots and um, just be like, you know, really, really serviceable, like in pick and, pick and roll situations uh, off the show roll and, and uh, you know, dunking the ball. So uh, you know, he's done a great job this year. He's still young. He's still learning. Um, he's doing a better job of, you know, letting the game slow down. And, uh, um, you know, for instance, when he's catching the, the short roll, he's doing a great job in the past couple of games of, you know, kicking it out to shooters whether it's me or Kenny in the corners, uh, which is a huge, huge thing, uh, you know, especially if you watch a guy like Draymond Green. Anytime he's in that short role, he's finding guys, uh, you know, in those corners for kill shots, and that's depleting for a defense. So, uh, you know, he's improving a lot. Michigan, Say it again. I consider Michigan kind of the upper Midwest, which is meant to take it as a compliment. I mean, they're still Midwest. What do you yeah. mean by that? Well, I mean, if there's a, a level of uh, kindness that I sense in the Midwest. Oh, yeah. Hospitality. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah. Values, you know. Uh, <laughs> wholesome. Okay. Wholesome. Yeah. Very wholesome. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. What's it like? No, no, no. I mean, you're right. So, so my, this is your first time living out east, I think, really. What, what have you discovered? I mean, what's it been like to you? Uh, I mean, actually, when I was in high school, I lived in Philly for about a year, a good year. So, um, you know, I've kind of been on the East Coast. It's it's always interesting. I've lived everywhere. Um, I haven't lived in the South, but, uh, you know, it's just a different brand of people everywhere you go. Um, you know, when I think about the Midwest, it's hospitality. It's, it's you know, very kind, wholesome type of people. Uh, West Coast, you know, it's a fast paced, fast life. Uh, laid back and you know the east coast is you know on the east you got to have that like hustlers mentality you know people are kind of just you know you know just keeping the movement pushing it um you know kind of worrying about themselves but um you know i've adjusted here i like it here um you know it's a lot of nice art museums and uh things of history that you know very really intrigue me so um i'm having a blast I, I Kenny? Okay, yeah, I think that's my nickname for him. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I also really liked your description of Kenny the other day when you were just like, he's a sweet kid. It was just a perfect encapsulation of what Kenny seems to be. But why did you each, like, what makes him like us that kind of, oh, he's kind of funny. Um, I mean, he's just a sweet kid, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I guess, you know, you don't really use that type of word for people, I guess, well, nowadays. NBA, yeah. yeah, you know, um, you know, because, you know, that comes off as like being soft. But, you know, when you're asking me a question about, 
someone being a human being, you know, that's sweet being sweet is an ultimate compliment. You know, that's, you know, being kind, someone that, you know, you could talk to, someone that, um, you know, is, is caring. And uh, no, that's, that's rare in society nowadays. And uh, it's refreshing when you have those type of vibes around you. Uh, Kyle, uh, you're up sick in rebounding this year. Would you say that's a matter of opportunity, or do you feel like you can improve in that area? Uh, just minutes. Just play more minutes, really. You know, I was, you know, last year I probably played about 23, 24 minutes a night, and I was getting double doubles in that short amount of time. So obviously, it's a lot of effort that goes into it, but um, I'm able to pace my energy a little bit, and uh, you know. We're playing more minutes, I'm gonna have more opportunities to, you know, find loose balls. And also, um, Danny mentioned your work ethic and your professionalism. You know, who's been the biggest influence for you that's kind of instilled that work ethic? Uh, a, a bunch of people. Uh, my mom is one person. Uh, she used to work two jobs. Uh, you know, work all day, all night, just to put food on the table. So at a young age, I was able to see that from the jump and, and realize it as a kid. Um, you know, uh, I've always just been a, a hardworking kid, really, honestly, you know, I'm coming from Flint, Michigan, a town that a lot of people don't really make it out of. And, um, you know, my only way out was just to work hard and, uh, just find a way. And, uh, I've had great role models in my life. All my friends were hardworking, hardworking kids. So, you know, we clicked right away and obviously coming to the NBA, learning how to be a professional, um, you know, being around guys like LJ, uh, you know, Rajon Rondo, uh, you know, so many different guys, even coaches, coaches, you know, Miles Simon, great guy that really taught me about hard work and being professional. Um, you know, the list goes on and forth. And uh, for me, I'm, I'm just a sponge. I love to, you know, intake knowledge and listen. And, uh, you know, I've been fortunate to be around great people, great mentors. All right, Kyle, let's transition over to Zoom for one question. Uh, we're going to take it from Karita. Hey, Kyle, how are you? Um, you guys have talked a lot about continuing to build your chemistry as a team, but as players, how do you build that same chemistry with your coach, a new coach at that? I mean, the, those type of things kind of take time because, um, you know, it's uh, just an interesting landscape. You know, when you talk about the NBA, you know, you're always around your assistant coaches more uh, as players. Um, you know, that's just how it always goes. You know, your player, uh, your, your assistant coaches are the people that rebound for you, uh, that work you out, uh, that watch film with you. And you don't really always have that dialogue with head coaches in the NBA um, as, uh, as player to head. Uh, but you also have rare occasions when you do. And uh, I think what stands out about Wes is uh, I promise I'm not trying to hype him up because he told me about that but um, he was an assistant coach for a long time and he understands that kind of relationship between um, you know assistant coach and a player so just with him being a head coach um, he understands that that realm so uh, it, it's just really easy to really just talk to him and you know ask some questions and you know he always says that he's not He's not always the, the smartest guy in the room. And uh, w when I'm saying that is, is, is not his way or the highway. Like, if you have a question, um, you can ask him in front of the group or you can be like, hey, I think this is a better way. And he'd be like, okay, let's do it that way. And, uh, you know, that's rare. You know, it's a guy that don't have really have an ego and that, uh, that stands out because, you know, there's a lot of coaches in this league that are, you know, my way or the highway. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's easy to get along with them, so. And we'll take the last question from Neil. Hey Kyle, along those lines of, you know, just working with an assistant coach, how has your relationship with Alex McLean grown from, you know, when you guys first started here and, you know, how is he maybe pushing you in new ways? Um, Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a good dude, man. He's a good guy. Um, you know, he, he's really, uh, knowledgeable about the game and, and he has a certain type of enthusiasm about himself that he loves to be in the gym and you know if you follow him you know on and off the floor you see uh, you know it's not just about the Wizards you know he, he generally loves the game of basketball he works out um, 
you know, a lot of top, uh, you know, female basketball players across the country. And that just kind of just shows you what type of guy he is. He loves basketball. So, um, you know, I, I actually knew him, uh, you know, a little bit prior just because of, um, you know, mutual circles and mutual friends. But, um, you know, he's a guy that loves the game of basketball and it's always fun to work with people um, that share that same type of love and passion uh, as you. You guys are very efficient at guarding the three point line. What do you think about you and, and what kind of put your structure? Uh, I guess the structure coach put in early. Uh, we go through our defensive shell every day in practice. So I think that helps just continue to push that and get out to the three point line and close out. And we just have guys that like to play hard. So that always helps. Yeah, I, I always said like it was a great trade for us. Um, a lot of guys that work hard uh, know how to play the game and and really like to play defense. So all those things, all those three things combined, uh, it, it should work out for us this year. And I said before, I, most people thought we probably lost the trade, but I think we won it. Um, just getting out there playing with um, pace, uh, obviously picking up my defense. That's one thing I try to focus on a lot and just trying to get guys involved, whether that's driving kick or just getting the ball moving. So um, those three things are probably the things I, I got better at the most. Yeah. Um, in our practice, our shoot around, uh, we went, we were locked in. We were going hard. Um, and the main thing was just locked in. So having that that early in the morning, the day before, and that early in the morning uh, before the game, it, it really helped us out there before. Just follow up on what you said a minute ago. Uh, it's, as a player, like, do you take pride in trying to win a trade? Is that something that, like, I mean, I feel like it's an unwritten rule that you want to win a trade. Um, like, if you get traded, you will want to be, like, obviously on the winning end. So that is just a thought process. I don't think it's like a one. It's just something you think about. Uh, hey, uh, what was it like playing your brother? Uh, it was awesome. Uh, it's always a blessing to get out there and play against one of my brothers. Um, we've come a long way to get here. They were here long before I was, so. It's a blessing for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, I've played against them for what, three or four years now. So we pretty much do that every time. So it's pretty cool. It's a, it's a special moment for me and my family. Was your dad at the game? Yeah, he was there. Yeah. Um, what's the desired outcome for, him, for your family? <laughs> I mean, they just want to see us play hard and do well. That's pretty much it. Um, obviously, they know how talented we are. They're the reasons we got here. So they just want to see us to get out there and have fun and play hard. It's not like that necessarily. Nah, I, they don't really care who wins, honestly. Aaron, where are those jerseys though? Just have them a pile here. Nah, I have them. Uh, so I have each team that they were on. Uh, so I have them hung up in my uh, basement. Yeah, I frame them. So. How are you getting adjusted to life here in New uh, pretty good. It's a nice city. Um, I've been around to all the monuments and the uh, little tour bus, so that was pretty cool. But it's a lot more I got to see. Um, but it's a nice city. I love it. Uh, it's a lot to do out here. It's busy, so it's pretty cool. All right, and we got time for one question from Zoom, and we'll take that from Neil. Hey, Aaron. Along those lines. Out of all the monuments that you saw, was there a specific spot or tourist location that you most enjoyed? I pretty much enjoyed all of it, man. We we were in the tour bus or it was a van for like four hours. And it was just cool just to get out and see all the monuments and stuff. Um, it, honestly, it was a, a blessing to see all of it. Was that your first time kind of just taking yeah. DC in, in that much depth? Yeah, that was my first time. I've I've only been out here when I uh, worked out for DC uh, in the 2018 before the 2018 draft. So 
It was pretty cool to get out here and see everything. Appreciate it, Aaron. Yep. Yeah, with my family. Yeah, we just got on the little van and toured around.